Hello and welcome inside Dan Johnson Arena alongside Coach John Vanderwall. I'm Phil Mason and this is the first episode of the John Vanderwall Coaches Show. Well, Coach, we've waited a long time to get to this point, and it looks like we're going to have to be just a little bit more patient. Uh, sure. Yeah. Hoping, to, hoping to open up this weekend with, uh, or scheduled to open up this weekend with Otterbein. They've canceled due to COVID issues on their side. Uh, how are the guys? How are you? We're, we're doing just fine. You know, we got a resilient group, and we keep talking about that they're going to have to be awfully resilient this year. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs, uh, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. It's been, it's been tough, right? You know, our, our guys came back uh, December 27th after being off for a month and a half, and I tell you what, I couldn't be prouder of them. They've been busting their tails. You know, we were going twice a day for six days a week for three weeks, and and now classes have started back up, and we're, we're still really getting after it. And, and they, they've been working really hard. And so, you know, when I had to break the news to them yesterday uh, that Otterbein was going to have to cancel on us, uh, you know, a lot of heads went down. It was, uh, of course. It, it was, a t- it was tough news to, to hear and swallow. Um, and tough news to give. Yeah, it's, it's tough news to give. Exactly right. You know, it's just uh, they've worked so hard. They've been through so much this year. They're just ready to compete and play against somebody else. Um, you know, so it is what it is. We're, you know, we're kind of in a holding pattern now. We're, we're still practicing, still trying to get better. Um, yeah, I hate to say this, but we're hoping another game in the league gets canceled. You know, I don't wish you any ill will on anybody. Uh, what was best for everybody, but for, for our guys' sake, it'd be great if another game got canceled, then we were able to pick up a game this weekend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's get into the team this year. You know, Mike Hall and uh, Caleb Poing. They've yep. graduated. You've lost them out of the starting lineup, but you're returning three guys in that starting lineup who were members of you know various All OAC teams. You've got the two seniors, Jason Ellis and Tim Krieger, and you've got the junior, Lucas Isley. Um, you know how much does that experience that they bring to the table? How much does that help the team, both on the court and you know during this situation where things are up in the air with COVID? Yeah, we we're excited about this year's team, right? That's why we want to play. Yeah, uh, we've got a. A good nucleus of guys back. Um, we, like, as you mentioned, we've got quite a few older guys. We've got a lot of juniors and seniors uh, that have been around the block. Mm-hmm. Um, they understand how we do things here at Marietta, and and they've been they've been great. They, they've they've really helped mentor and, and help the younger guys out. Uh, as you mentioned, on the floor, off the floor, uh, I've been proud of our leadership, um, and and they've been they've been working really hard at it. So we've got a you know I think a great roster. Full of a lot of talent, uh, which is, I guess, maybe one of the other frustrating things, you know, for as for our coaching staff, um, just knowing that we feel like we got kind of a special team, or we think we could have a special team, and we really want to see what they can do. Uh, so I want to get them as many games as we can possibly get them. Uh, but but you're right, we we've, we've got a good group of guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mentioned some names there that you know the fans know, and and, and fans know uh, Mason Lydic. And uh, he's a guy who's given you good minutes, you know, in his first two seasons here. I think, you know, just averaged about 10 his freshman year, 20 last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the next step for Mason? Yeah, you know, he's a junior now. And, um, you know, he's a guy that we've got pretty high expectations for. Uh, real real athletic kid and uh, just a dynamic type player, you know. And I think he has the skill set to to become a special player in our in our conference. And uh, we're excited to see what kind of jump he makes from his sophomore year to to his junior year. I mean, that's that's typically when guys kind of really start. They get two years under their belt. Um, and he's, you know, to his credit, he's he's been coming off the bench for us the last two years. He's, he's had some other really good wing players on, on this team. Uh, and he's been team-oriented the entire time, hasn't, Hasn't gotten self-consumed or worried about himself a whole lot, so I'm super proud with him there because everybody here knows he's he's a pretty talented player, oh, yeah. and uh, and we we're, we're expecting him to kind of have a breakout year for us. Yeah, and you know, at the start of a new season, you know, guys graduate, they move on. Some of those guys further down on the bench from last year, they're starting to scoot up. Uh, who are some you know faces that maybe are going to be still a little fresh for uh, Pioneer fans? Who should they keep an eye out for? Yeah, you know, I think. Um, we, we've got a lot of guys back, so and, you, and you've mentioned a lot of those guys. I, I think the position that's kind of so far in this preseason area that's been up for grabs, if you will, 
is our four spot, you know, mm-hmm. our power forward yeah. position. Uh, Mike uh, Hall and Caleb, who both graduated, both you know played at that position some for us. Um, so, you know, you'll, you'll, we'll probably be seeing some new new faces out there um, uh, at that position. You know, er, early on here, Brett Martin, who was uh, who was injured for us last year, didn't get a chance to play at all, or didn't even get to practice last year. Uh, has done a lot of really good things in practice. And, and Tommy Willoughby is one of those guys that was maybe further down on the bench last mm-hmm. year that's scooting his way up, up, yeah. up. And, uh, you know, he's just relentless on the glass, and he plays with that energy and that effort that we really like. Absolutely. Uh, so, um, and then, you know, there's, there's other post guys, um, you know, that, that are competing as well and, uh, and doing a nice job. Uh, you know, Brian Washington, Brennan Crawford, all those guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's competitive every single day. Uh, in, in practice, and, and, and Addie Black, so a freshman that we had that we think is going to be pretty good. But I, I think that's where you'll see the most new faces. Uh, we, we, I think we do have a couple. You know, uh, we have some really good freshman guards yeah. uh, that are going to be great players here. Uh, I don't know how much playing time they'll get this year, just because we're pretty deep. Uh, but but man, we uh, we we think we hit the lottery with our with our freshman guards um, and our and our wing players. Um, you know, moving forward, absolutely. Uh, so. Moving on, you know, uh, you get together in the off season, you know, with Nick and Brennan, and you know, you look at what you did well last year. You know, things that can improve. Uh, you know, what are you what are you trying to expand on? You know, during this off season. Yeah, you know, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel, right? I mean, uh, you know, last year we're twenty one and seven, went to the NCAA tournament. Would have liked to have had a little better year, um, but th- we've made some minor tweaks, you know, uh, to, to what we do. F- added a few wrinkles, uh, things like that. Uh, one of the things we, we really want to do is, you know, we're, we're trying to play as fast as we can. Uh, we want to be an up tempo team, like like always. Want to be relentless on the glass. Um, but you know, I I want to make sure that every guy we put on the floor is a threat, and uh, I, I think that's kind of like the biggest theme is this year is we're we're looking for guys that can that are that are dynamic playmakers. Uh, I don't I don't want to put anybody on the floor uh, that that can't score. That can, that's not a threat, right? Yeah. So we want to. I think if you have five playmakers on the floor, you're pretty hard to prepare for. And uh, so that's kind of been our goal. We've been doing a lot of skill work with our guys, trying to get them more ready to make those plays. Um, we want to give our guys a little bit more freedom this year, you know, to to make those plays. I think uh, one of the adjustments we're making is we've been pretty methodical with, you know, hey. This is our system. This is how you run it. These are the plays you make. And, uh, yeah, maybe loosening up the reins just a little bit. You know, <laughs> let the guys make a few plays there here and there. There's times where my skin crawls a little oh, bit. I'm don't, sure. yeah. don't get me wrong. But, it's uh, easier said than done. But we're trying to let them make some plays and give them a little bit more freedom just because we, because we want to be an attacking style you know, offense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great, Coach. I sure appreciate you joining me. Thanks uh, for having you know, me. We hope to break down the Otterbein. But, uh Join us next week uh, here in the film room, and uh, we'll talk about getting ready for Baldwin-Wallace. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it, man.